Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. C minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mission and lift off. Got speed Endeavor and crew 2. Copy, 1 Alpha. Endeavour launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on Crew 2, now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. Hello, ISR fans, and welcome to the International Space Station. I'm NASA astronaut and former ISR subpilot Megan MacArthur. I'm so glad to know that students are still innovating and competing in the international submarine races. I'm sorry that it's not possible for you to be in the water at Carter Rock this year, but this is still a unique opportunity to learn and grow. It is absolutely true that my participation changed my life. I was studying aerospace engineering at UCLA, hoping to one day work for NASA, maybe even become an astronaut, though I was a bit hazy on the details. One day in senior year, I sat down in class next to my friend Derek. He was a fellow aerospace engineering student, and he said, Megan, we're going to build a submarine. And somehow, that became the thing that we did for the next six months in all of our spare time, and even some of our not-so-spare time. We were a small team, so of course everyone got conscripted into multiple roles. I was the smallest person on the team, so I was assigned the pilot role in our two-person sub as the only one who could fit into the space left over after we built the sub around our powerhouse bicycler. So I needed to become scuba certified. As someone who was not a strong swimmer and a little bit afraid of the ocean, this was something of a challenge. But meeting that challenge helped me grow stronger, and I fell in love with the ocean along the way. So when I went to the sub races, I was winding down my undergraduate studies and trying to figure out what to do next. I really wanted to be involved with space exploration, but now I was dreaming about ocean exploration too. As Jim mentioned, he arranged for me to meet Kathy Sullivan during the end of races barbecue. So I asked her, what should I do if I want to be an astronaut? Keep pursuing aerospace or take a left turn into ocean exploration? At this point in my life, I've been asked that same question by dozens of aspiring young astronauts, and I give them the same answer that Kathy gave to me on that beach. You need to figure out what it is that you love doing, and then work really hard to be good as you can be at doing that thing. She said, don't try to guess what NASA would want and pursue something for just that reason. If you don't love what you're doing, you're never going to be that good at it. And if you're not good at it, you're not going to get selected by NASA. Getting selected to be an astronaut is a real long shot, but if you choose to pursue something you love and you never get selected, you still get to go to work every day and do something you love. It was great advice. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Jim, and all the people who encouraged me along the way. It turns out that when you get right down to it, what I love is working with a team that is tackling interesting, challenging problems. That's essentially what engineering is, no matter what type you choose. Through this project, you're getting a strong foundation in teamwork and finding innovative solutions to challenges. This will serve you well no matter which realm you choose to explore. So find that passion. It might take a while, or you might change your mind at some point, and that's okay. As long as you keep learning, keep challenging yourself, keep trying new things, you're on a good path. And don't forget to share your dreams with the people around you. You'll meet people like Jim and Kathy who want to help you and encourage you on your journey. Best of luck to you, and maybe I'll see you at the races one of these years. <laughs>